So today I'm supposed to be talking about safety issues identification for the Motorcycle Strategic Action Plan. So the first thing that you might be wondering for yourselves is, what the heck is the Motorcycle Strategic Action Plan, right? Um, basically, all you need to know about this is it's a state document that Texas produces. The name indicates it's strategic, and it's to identify strategies and approaches that are going to help reduce motorcycle-related fatalities, crashes, and injuries in the state of Texas. The first strategic action plan was released in 2013, and this was our first attempt at a strategic plan for Texas. But about the same time that this was released, NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they published a strategic document called Countermeasures That Work. And this served as a basic reference guide for highway safety offices to select effective evidence-based countermeasures. And this covered several traffic safety areas such as bicycles, pedestrians, older drivers, um, seat belts, and it did also include a component for motorcycles. But it was not specific to just motorcycles. About the same time, Texas is reviewing its um, motorcycle-related fatalities. In 2010, there were roughly 430 motorcycle fatalities. In 2011, there were almost 500 fatalities. In 2012, it went down a little bit to 470, roughly. And in 2013, it jumped back up to 500. So Texas is sitting over here wondering, what are the projections going to be like for 2014, 2015, and beyond? So what they did was they were very proactive, and they asked to undergo a motorcycle a technical a technical assessment for its motorcycle safety program. And this involves bringing in different objective experts from around the country to come and hear testimony that's provided by Texas stakeholders, Texas motorcycle stakeholders. And they provide testimony regarding what's working in terms of the motorcycle safety program, what's not working, what are some of the challenges. And then this objective expert team basically produces a list of recommendations or suggestions that the state can implement. So this came about in 2014. In 2014, also, TxDOT released their Texas Strategic Highway Safety Plan. And again, this covers other traffic safety areas, such as the bicycles, the older drivers, the pedestrians, and it does have a motorcycle component to it. And it also talks about strategic planning, and it moves beyond some of these other areas. But again, it's not specific to motorcycles. So it's a year 2016, a TxDOT has asked that we revise the strategic action plan, the one that was first come about in 2013, because all of these strategic documents had been published in that time, and because of some other workings that had happened in that time, it was basically just time to revise this action plan. One thing that they specifically asked for, though, was that we hold focus groups with various motorcycle safety stakeholders and that we get their feedback regarding all of the suggestions and strategies that have been suggested that Texas implement in order to give some sort of priority to them. Because the state can only reasonably implement so many of these countermeasures at one time they ask that these stakeholders help prioritize and help give rank to which ones the state should pursue. So what we've been doing is we've been holding five focus groups. And thus far, we've only thus far we've conducted four out of the five, um, and each focus group is tailored to a certain expertise, a certain background. So we've had one focus group that involved the state strategic level, and this involved um, we've had another focus group that involved uh, community leaders to give more of the localized perspective. One focus group has involved law enforcement to give the enforcement perspective. The fourth focus group has centered around riders, which included club members as well as independent riders. And the fifth one, which is going to be held next month, is going to involve the media, and it's going to give that outreach perspective. Now, these are relatively small focus groups. 
There are about five to eight people within each of these focus groups, and we've kept them small on purpose in order to give a healthy discussion, in order to ensure a healthy discussion that everyone there is participating um, and everyone has an equal opportunity to, to speak. So again, I mentioned, we, we've taken all of the strategies and countermeasures that were listed in these four strategic documents, and then we gave each of these focus groups a subset of all of the countermeasures that were listed in these documents. And that basically ensured that none of the focus groups were there for you know 48 hours reviewing all of these countermeasures. The countermeasures were divided into 11 categories. They involve program management, and this would be examples like providing guidance to the Texas Motorcycles um, Safety Coalition or developing evaluation protocols for the strategic action plan. The second category was personal protective equipment, and some examples of the strategies and countermeasures were outreach and education on gear use and increased participation of EMS personnel in helmet use advocacy. The next category was motorcycle operator licensing. These included things like increasing fines and penalties for riding without a motor license, uh, I'm sorry, without a M license or endorsement, or updating driver licensing system to improve recording of course completion. The next category is motorcycle riding education and training. Some countermeasures included expanding the three-wheel rider courses and availability and revising rider coach preparation to accommodate more participant schedules and locations. Next category dealt with DUI and DWI. These were things like conducting motorcycle safety campaigns on DUI riding, encouraging and recognizing motorcycle groups that self-police on DUI or DWI. The next category dealt with legislation and regulations and the, of course, um, big elephant in the room was encouraging reinstatement of the mandatory universal helmet law for all operators and passengers. The next category was law enforcement. Some of the countermeasures that they evaluated were incorporating motorcycle specific messages into current enforcement activities or to de develop data-driven countermeasures and implement selective enforcement where fatal and serious injury motorcycle crashes occur. The next one was highway engineering. This included countermeasures or strategies such as encouraging the use of motorcycle-specific warning signs in construction areas or other areas that would impede or other areas where the road conditions were variable, and to develop an awareness presentation for state highway and local engineers to make them aware of how road conditions could impact motorcycle operation. The next category dealt with motorcycle rider conspicuity and motorcycle awareness. This involved things like communicating to motorcyclists the responsibility they have in preventing multi-vehicle crashes, such as to not speed, to not drink and ride, um, proper lane positioning. The next category deals with communications programs. Um, some examples of these countermeasures were building the Texas Motorcycle Safety Coalition's contact database to send information, updates, and safety messages, or to develop the Texas um, or to develop Texas-specific motorcycle safety materials addressing impaired riding, licensing, and rider training. And finally, the last um, category was program and evaluation and data. I didn't have a fun little uh, photographic for that, so you have blue bonnets instead. Um, this included things like conducting in-depth analysis of Texas motorcycle crash data and sharing and communicating effectiveness of strategies so other organizations can use them and adapt them. So that's the rundown of, you, you basically got two examples for each of the categories, and um, those are just to give you an idea of some of the things that were spoken about at these focus groups. What we have next, though, is we are asking you, what is being distributed to you all, is we're asking you to participate in a research component. You know, we've talked about that we met with these focus groups already, and they've already given us some preliminary prioritization of these safety countermeasures. What we have done is we've taken the top ranked countermeasure in each of the 11 categories and given you this questionnaire. 
Now you might see that there, I told you there are 11 categories and we're asking you to rank them one to 14. There are actually 14 countermeasures listed because in some of the focus groups, there was so much discussion and so much debate that, um, that um, there was so much focus and so much discussion and debate that there was not a hard consensus about which one should be prioritized over the other ones. So you actually have 14 countermeasures. If you would like to participate, we ask that you review the information sheet that has been handed to you that just goes over some of the expectations and, and what it is that we're asking you to do if you're voluntarily consenting to participate in this questionnaire. The information sheet basically explains to you, you know, that we have it there for you because we're not, you know, like kidnapping you and holding you to making and forcing you to complete this questionnaire. Again, I'm just emphasizing it's completely voluntary. But as Mike was saying, this is your opportunity to provide feedback, to have a direct impact, and, and to give direction to the state of Texas and what kinds of countermeasures they should be prioritizing. So we're asking you to take the survey that looks like this, and you have two pages. And if you stack it one on top of the other, you'll be able to see all 14 countermeasures. We're asking you to rank them one to 14, one being the most impactful, one having the most benefit in terms of reducing the number of fat motorcycle fatalities, crashes, and injuries, and one being the one that the state should prioritize over the other countermeasures. 14 being the opposite. You think it has the least amount of impact and you think it should be the least uh, prioritized out of all of the countermeasures. Then for your top five, we're asking you to just give a little bit of additional detail. We're asking you to rank it in terms of effectiveness, which is the second column. You give it a one star means, yeah, it's worth pursuing, but you're not sure that it'll have the greatest impact and three stars being, yes, this is, this is the end all be all that we believe is going to have the most impact. So one star, not that effective. Three stars, very great effectiveness. The third column here is we're asking you to estimate costs. We're not asking you to give us a specific number because we know that's quite difficult. But if you can give us a dollar sign, as in one dollar sign is fairly cheap, fairly affordable to, to implement, and three dollar signs, meaning that's the most expensive, um, that's the most expensive and would um, countermeasure to implement. The fourth column here is time. Give us a, a range, less than one year to implement, two to three years to implement, five years, 10 years, whatever you think is appropriate. The, uh, I lost count. The fifth, the fifth column here is lead organization. Who do you believe in your mind would be the organization that you would assign responsibility to spearhead or lead the effort of this countermeasure? And then the last column is what kind of milestones would you associate with the successful implementation of that countermeasure? It could either be measures that you need to meet in order to be successful or, uh, or uh, sorry, I hope that made sense. Did that make sense? <laughs> um, so basically, we're asking you to rank all of the countermeasures, one to 14, and then for your top five, to please just give additional detail. And again, this is completely voluntary, but it is, it is an opportunity to, to make an impact and to give feedback and input into the direction of, of what countermeasures should be pursued in the state. So if there's any questions along the way, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we did have a thought that, you know, what if there's a countermeasure on here, or what if we've come up with a countermeasure or a strategy that's not listed on the, the sheet? Well, there's a possibility that it's already been discussed about in one of the focus groups. So what we're asking you to do is if you do have a suggestion, go ahead and just rank the one to 14 for the, the countermeasures that are listed. But then on the back of the paper, 